way that they speak together in a very unified fashion. Kick in the snare, please. And now, a little bit slower than that, a snare and a kick. Okay, and now that like, kicking the snare of Tom, kicking the snare of Tom, but about, but about, but about thing. At the, a, a little bit more at that last speed there. Okay, now. Anybody notice anything about the way we perceive those various combinations of sounds? The way, and, and this is the uh, this is the exemplar for a well-tuned drum kit, is at no point does the attack of one of the drums interfere with the attack of another drum. Now, do that same tom thing, but like fast. Okay. Even though the kick drum is ongoing, through all of that, the, the kick remains resonant through all of that, they never interfere with one another. And believe me, there is many a drum kit where the duration of the kick takes away all of the impact of the remainder of the drums. So the only thing that you can play on a kit that would be like that would be the kick and the snare, because no matter what, the incredibly quick transient response of the snare, one snare hit please, one rim shot please, okay, the incredible transit response of the snare drum will pass through no matter what the enduring, you know, what the, the longer lasting uh, omnidirectional sound is. So the way that the kit is balanced together between its omnidirectional sounds, floor time and kick, and all the rest of the drums makes it an exceptionally good example to do this with. But you can make any drum kit do this if you're willing to tune it so that all of the characteristics which I just described are what it is instead of like tuning it to make the perfect, ooh, it's the perfect resonance, you know, like, fuck that shit, okay? Because <laughs> what you need it to do is make sure that the transient response of the smaller drums is audible over top of the longer duration of the omnidirectional drums. Does that make sense? Okay? That's it. See ya. Because you now know everything I know, okay? Now, now can you do... Uh, tom roll and kick together with no snare, but just okay. Now, what do you hear when he goes to the floor, Tom, and the kick? Do you hear that start to collapse because mm -hmm. both of them are making frequencies which is are down in the omnidirectional range, and just the floor, Tom, just to roll. Hear how the floor, you don't even know you did this, okay? Hear how the floor tom also makes a sound which is an octave higher than the fundamental frequency just on the floor tom, please. Making two notes, okay? And then, of course, there's also the diving note at the end, which is like, that's mostly for fun and to make choruses be exciting, you know? But um, the fact that it's making two notes means that the transient response of the higher portion of it is above, like that hum of omnidirectionality, making even that be separate. Now, thank you for that. that I'm great. just laughing because, A, the first time I started to play with Jay a year and a half ago, he said, I love your kit. Great. I don't know what that meant. Then I will tell you that when I tuned it, when I first got it, and every time, I just start here, and I go here, and I go here, and I go here, and I go here, and I make sure it sounds the way I like it to sound. I don't know shit about resonance and all that stuff. <laughs> this, bad, this bad boy better sound exactly the way I wanted to sound when I'm playing. <laughs> well, and maybe that's why you're my drummer. Maybe because you hear drums the way I hear drums. <laughs> Could be. You know. Also, you know you've never heard that kid. I know. Because you're on the wrong side. Yeah. We're on the right side. The correct side. Okay. Okay. Now, in the instance of the pieces of hammered spun brass... To make a coherent wavefront out of the entire kit, and remember that whole like rap that I did about nobody's ever gone out to the nightclub to go see, you know, uh, an incredible ragtime player.
You know, it's it's the co it's the coordination, it's the coherent wavefront of the entire kit that makes it work. And the symbols that go with this kit exhibit the same set of transient response relationships to the omnidirectional stuff that the that the uh, rack rack toms do. So now kick, snare, ride, and then crash, and then ride, and then crash. Okay, okay. but not the splash. Not this or not uh, that. The high responses are not being tramped on by having the kick drum be too big, too fat, too floppy, too like a tacky or too resonant. All right, and uh, to have a kit that like does that without me having to tune the drum kit while the drummer's out of the room, mm -hmm. uh, we which I've had to so do much. normally, <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, everything that we have heard so far creates a coherent wavefront about three and a half or four feet in front of the kit of drums. So every, like you guys are in the perfect spot, you know, as it gets closer to the back of the room, that coherent wavefront begins to diffuse a little bit because the high frequency stuff has begun to taper off by the time we get the whole way uh, to the, you know, to the front of the room, uh, the high frequency portion of it has, has begun to fade away because there's so much less energy up in those higher frequencies. Coherent wavefront of everything that we have heard now, if do everything and play all the symbols except the splash, and then when you get to like the middle of the thing you're going to play, hit the splash, and then we're going to talk about that, okay? Pretty similar thing to play the splash like in the midst of it and not the other symbols. Okay. Now, what the splash is, the splash is a, that's a special thing. All right. The splash is not part of the coherent wavefront. And you can drive yourself berserk trying to make just a splash by itself. Trying to, that's a cartoon sound. Okay? That's like, that's breaking dishes and people falling down the steps and, you know. That's a cartoon sound and you cannot make that sound be part of the coherent wavefront. No matter how hard, no matter how many million times you adjust where your overheads are and you change your frequency response to the overheads and you go, no, it not, must not be the right mic. Because every time he hits that sound, it sticks out like it was in a cartoon. And that's because it was made to stick out like it was in a cartoon. Okay, so when you see a splash symbol and when you see an inverted symbol where the symbol has been popped inside out or one of those China Boy symbols, they were made not to be part of the coherent wavefront. So there's the sound of the whole kit of drums, and then to, it gives a whole other voice, splash symbol, or a China boy, or one of those, up, you know, one of those upside down guys. And people who were poor, I mean, like back in the end of the disco era, people would just take regular symbols and drive their truck over them, because that would pop them and, you know, make them be inverted, and they put them on the stands in it, you know, and God, they always sound like hell. <laughs> You know, but it was fun watching them drive their truck. <laughs> okay, I want to do the symbol thing real quick. I need.